I am going to hand over to our speaker today, and that is Dr. Michael Finneran, who is the head of the Department of Drama and Theatre Studies here at Mary Mackle College. So over to you now, Mike. Thank you, Rachel. And Steve Accorda, Falter Over Fod, Guzzi on um on Taspontus and Lyra's show. Um, welcome everyone. I'm so delighted and privileged to be able to talk to you all this morning. And thank you to my great colleague Rachel, uh, a colleague Rachel, and all my colleagues in our strategic communications and marketing uh, team for facilitating this. So my name is Mike Finneran. I'm head of drama and theatre studies at Mary Macleod College. Um, in a nutshell, what am I? Well, I am an academic, so I'm a teacher, I'm a researcher, um, but I'm also an artist. And I suppose the reason I start with all of those things is because drama at Mary Macleod College, particularly our single honours programme, our BA in Contemporary and Applied Theatre Studies, touches upon all of those things. It recognises and it celebrates drama as a very academic subject in terms of its study and its analysis and its background, but it also it celebrates drama in its artistic form through making and understanding and viewing theatre. Um, and, and, and obviously we do a lot of teaching and a lot of learning, so all of those things are at the heart of, of what drama is all about. So folks, um, I'm going to talk to you for about 20 minutes and just tell you a little bit about the programme. Um, for those who are interested, tell you a little bit about how you get in. And then after that, we'll, we'll go back to some Q&A and we'll, um, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to ask and address some more specific questions that you might have. But I'm going to, um, going to start with sharing my screen. Um, so this is my, my formal title. Um, so I'm Dr. Michael Finneran, and as I say, you know, we, 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 we do the scholarly thing as well as the artistic thing quite well here, if I say so myself. And as Rachel said, I'm Head of Drama and Theatre Studies. My email address is there if people ever wanted to contact me. And the programme that I'm going to be speaking to you about today is the BA in Contemporary and Applied Theatre Studies, which is MI001, um, which is a four-year level eight um, or honours um, degree programme. And the BA CATS has been here. We've just graduated our third cohort of students from the BA CATS programme. So that means, I guess, that we're six, maybe seven years old. It's a relatively new drama and theatre studies programme. And in terms of Ireland as a whole, it's a really it's a really new and innovative programme, I think, and a really exciting departure, perhaps, from some of the other theatre programmes that you might find in the other universities. Um, it's quite different because of its newness. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a while. But I suppose one of the main reasons why it's a little bit different is because it hasn't come from an English department. And that's not giving English as a language, as a wonderful language or colloquial language, a hard time. It's simply that um, we're not as perhaps concerned with the study of texts as, as, as might be the case elsewhere. So the BA CATS programme um, is, is very much a, a you know, hybrid programme. And it, comb it combines you know, the, the, the study of the art form itself with its history and with its theory. And right through this presentation, you will see lots of imagery of our, our students. These guys here um, are just graduated. So they got their degrees, parchments last week, and they were in a production of um, a wonderful play called 448 Psychosis, a very famous Sarah Kane play, in one of our two venues. And that was in the bell table a number of years ago. But I think before we get into details, I think it's really important because I know lots of people on the call will be wondering, well, why, you know, it's quite a quite a specialised thing to do at, at university or college. Why, why a degree in drama and theatre studies? What can possibly come of it? And I know as well that there's lots of perhaps parents or guardians or loved ones who, who sometimes are quite concerned that, oh, well, you know, maybe I should do something more broad or am I going into a, into a, into a very kind of specific cul-de-sac if I do drama and theatre studies? And what I say, I suppose, in response to that is, is that a degree in drama, as with any degree, you know, you, you, this is your, your foundation base. This is your starting point in your third level education. It's not a commitment for life. You know, so you, if you do the BA CATS program, it, it's not to say that you will be spending your life doing drama and theatre. So at least maybe you will. Maybe you'll turn out to be a, uh, an Oscar winning actor or maybe you'll turn out to, to, to write plays for the Abbey Theatre or wherever it might be. But equally, it may well be that you go on to become a teacher. It may well be that you go on to work in business. It may well be that you go on to work in, 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 you know, in retail, whatever it might be. So a degree you need to think of as a starting point. And I think what better starting point can you have, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a few moments, uh, than a degree in drama. And, you know, I think it's important at this stage as well, for those of you on the call, to recognize that, that going to college should be a matter of the heart as, well, as much as a matter of the head that um, you know, you're at an age where uh, you, know, you, you get to, to choose now, you get to decide, having gone through the school system, which is by its nature very, very broadly oriented, you're at a stage where you get to specialize, you get to follow your heart, you get to follow your passion, your desire, your soul. And, and that, you need to honor that, I think. I think that's important too. And never underestimate the importance 
of, you know, we, we always talk about a correlation between people who are really motivated about their studies and overall success. If you're motivated about what you study at, at college, you will, you will do better. It's as simple as that. So acknowledge that passion. And I think as with so many um, of, of, and many of you may have been at the BA program earlier on today, and my colleague David spoke at that about drama on the, on the joint honours program. But, you know, taking a degree in the arts and humanities is very much about, you know, going through a portal. It's a gateway into a world of exploration in literature and business and culture, academia. You know, I, I was, um, I've just come out of a lecture with, with the first year class and I was teaching about the, the medieval period and, you know, the, that time of darkness in Western civilization and going into the Renaissance and the Medici's and Leonardo da Vinci and the, the Italian Renaissance and the birth of opera and Commedia dell'arte. And I made the point to the students, uh, you know, that actually the stuff that we're teaching there is, is as uh, germane to, 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 um, to history, to geography, to, to politics as it is to drama and theatre studies. So a degree in the arts it should be considered because it is all of those things. And particularly if you're passionate about performance, if you're passionate about the arts, about drama and theatre studies, passionate about other people, I think drama is a great place to begin. Um, so, you know, it's all of those things and, and jumping right to the very end, you know, what you get from a degree in drama and theatre studies is not just, you know, this incredible knowledge base of, of the world traditions of, of, of performance, but you also get a lot of what we call transferable skills. And, and these are of increasing importance in the world that we live in now, because I suppose once upon a time when I was your age, perhaps, which is neither today nor yesterday, um, you went, you know, you went to college, you did a degree, and it was assumed that you would have a career in that degree area. That connection is is less than it used to be. Um, increasingly, as I've already said, you know, an undergraduate degree is a starting point. But what we give you in an undergraduate degree in the arts and in the humanities are so many skills that are applicable to whatever um, professional life you you choose to live, and you can see them on the screen in front of you. You know. Studying drama and theatre studies improves, and I can say this definitively, improves confidence, your ability to present in front of a group. Obviously, performance, and of course, performance is not just performance on stage, but performance in a boardroom, performance in a meeting, performance in a presentation. You know, teamwork, collaboration are at the heart of what we do, but also some really kind of mundane things like, like time management, organisational skills. These are things we teach. You can't be late for a rehearsal. You can't be late for an entrance on stage. Self-awareness, self-discipline. Um, an open mind, you know, uh, and, and, and an ability and a desire to move beyond boundaries is, is at the heart of, of exploring through and within drama, but also things like communication skills, how to speak to your peers, how to speak to people in charge of you, analytical, critical research skills, you know, breaking, being able to go to a performance and break it down. Again, think of the skills that are at the heart of that, you know, that, and that are applicable to sport, but are also applicable to the world of business um, or commerce or, 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 or literature, for example. And, you know, it's probably not a terribly popular thing to say, but we, we criticize people. We say you could do better here and you could do better there. Always in a very formative and in a very uh, productive way but again you know the ability to take criticism to learn from it and and the ability to work hard are not to be underestimated as qualities again you're seeing various images as i go through the presentation of our students this is a, a wonderful play by bertolt brecht um uh, the irresistible rise of our tour Uy, which uh, we did um, when a, a new American president came to office a number of years ago, I thought it was right and appropriate that we do a, do a play about the emergence of a, of a dictator. That might be slightly controversial, but we're not afraid to deal with um, topics like that. So why Mary I and why a degree in contemporary and applied theatre studies? Well, uh, you know, first of all, I suppose the, the, the degree title signals the fact that, yes, you know, that, that we're slightly different to perhaps other universities and other colleges. But this is fundamentally a broadly based undergraduate programme covering all aspects of modern drama and theatre. So it's contemporary. It's looking more at how drama is made in the 21st century than it is perhaps in the 15th century or in the 18th century. That's not to say we don't look at the past. Of course we do. You have to understand Shakespeare and Chekhov and, and the Greeks before you can you can make contemporary theatre. But we're really interested in drama in the here and now. We're really interested in, in, in street theatre. We're really interested in device theatre, site-specific theatre. They're really kind of, I was at the Dublin Theatre Festival last week and I, I saw a play called The Book of Names, which was set in the Docklands. And it was about, you know, the War of Independence and, and people, you know, people who were fighting for, for Irish freedom and their name went into a book of names. So that's the, that's where a lot of Irish theatre is at now. Really exciting spaces, exciting concepts, really relevant to modern Ireland. It's a lot more that than it is perhaps the Sean O'Casey and, and, and Brian Free tradition, which is still very, very important. So we have a specific focus on new and contemporary modes of theatre production, as well as the way in which drama and theatre are used beyond stage performance, because 
you know, one of the first thing I do, uh, first things I do when I when I meet a new bunch of first years is I start to say, well, how many jobs you know exist in the theatre? And of course, everyone says actor, because the reality is most of you have had positive experiences, perhaps in performance or in acting, and that's why you're here today. But of course, what I do then is I put acting up in the in the top corner of my whiteboard, because that's only one job. And then we proceed to fill the rest of the whiteboard with so many other jobs. So there's you know there's producers, there's directors, there's dramaturgs. There's theatre facilitators, there's programme managers, there's stage managers, deputy stage managers, you know, uh, uh, technical directors. There's myriad jobs in this field, many, many of them often hidden because, of course, in theatre studies, you see, you tend to see acting and you tend to, that's the, the, that's the tip of the iceberg. But 90% of the work that goes on in our field is hidden below the surface and no less rich. So we teach you about all of those things. We teach you about what, what a dramaturg does, you know, what a, what a, a drama therapist does. And, and, and obviously what actors do as well, because we need actors as well. So in the programme, students have an opportunity to get to, to develop their own artistic skills and specialise in particular areas of interest to them. So lots of our students might be interested in stage management. And one of our fourth years at the moment is directing a play. That's our area of passion. So she's, she's directing a play with other students in it. And we're, we're examining that as part of her, her work. Um, and we teach you about the academic traditions in, in, in drama and theatre studies, everything from cultural management, um, to technical skills, to um, to how drama is used in schools and in youth groups, and but also we we allowed students to encounter a, a, an extensive range of professional practice. So our students last weekend were at the Bell Table to see a show that was in the Dublin Theatre Festival called Duck Duck Goose, which is about you know feminism in contemporary Ireland. Um, <clears throat> our, our, our third year students were on placement at the moment, working all over the country. Some of them at the Golden International Arts Festival, some in Cork, some here in Limerick, and, and, and um, working with professional theatre makers, and there's great opportunities for, for that. This uh, image that you see in front of you is from a site-specific piece that we did in a, an old um, meditation space that's here on the campus, and I think it's a really good image. It captures the kind of, um, the kind of modern feel to a lot of our work. So in terms of nuts and bolts, MI001, folks, is a four years honours undergraduate program. So you, from the University of Limerick, obviously all the, all the MIC programmes are academically granted by UL. Um, so it's a level eight programme, the same as an honours degree from UCD or NUIG or wherever it might be. Application is through the CAO um, MI001. So make sure you remember that number. It's, it's, um, it's, it's a pretty much an easy one to remember, I think. And we have special entry routes for mature students. We always have a, quite a number of mature students, and that's you don't have to be very mature, I hasten to add. Students over 23 years of age uh, are more than welcome to our programs. And we also have very special entry routes, and this has become increasingly used over the last number of years for QQI, FETAC, FET, further education, and training sector applicants. So if, if you fall into one of those categories, if you're in the further education sector or if you're a mature student, get onto our website, look for more details, mic.ie, or... Um, um, you know, get in touch with us um, either, you know, through the Q&A at the end of this or, or get in touch with us by email after us. We offer up to 25 places on the programme. We're building slowly uh, towards that at the moment. Our intake is sometimes around 10, 12, mostly on the BA programme. But our BA CATS, sorry, our BA CATS programme, our students study alongside the BA students. So, you know, you're often in a lecture that was, you know, nearly 60 in my lecture this morning. We have a lot of international students. A lot of people pick up our modules as well as elective modules. One of the things that's interesting about our interviews, we don't have an, an audition or an interview process. And, um, you know, that's unusual because a, a lot of other programs still do. Let me tell you why. Um, it's driven by the belief that, um, that everyone should have the right to study drama and theatre studies. That there's nothing, this is not an actor training program. If, if you are interested in acting, clearly your skills will improve here, but it's not specifically an actor training program. Um, and, you know, because our school system is quite sporadic, um, accommodation shall we say for drama and theater studies you may have been fortunate enough to go to a school or to a youth or to a school with drama or to a place that had youth theater but equally you may not but we want to accommodate anyone with a passion anyone who who's really interested in motivation about drama is more than welcome here so we don't audition or interview people it is our job to teach you about drama you are welcome to come here and obviously the college offers a hugely generous range of scholarships to incentivize people um, to to come and study Again, you know, just some, some imagery, some of the posters of our work. Um, we perform our work, in, you know, we're, we're unique in that we perform all our work in, in professional theatres. We have two incredible theatre spaces affiliated with the college, the Lime Tree Theatre, which is here on our campus, and then the Bell Table, which is a kilometre away. So, you know, the, 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 the two plays on the left and right, Crucible and Arturo E, were performed in the Bell Table. Now, what specific modules will you suffer here, or suffer? Well, a Freudian slip there, will you study here in college? 
Well, we offer a huge range of modules. So as you'll know from perhaps attending other talks or other open days, university programs are based up of, of, of individual kind of units or modules or courses within them, which you have to pass independently of each other. So the list you see in front of you, again, fills out some of the things I was talking about earlier. These are the modules that we offer. And you get a sense of them just where the moments of kind of personal intellectual growth will come, where the moments of artistic growth will come, um, and where the moments of kind of applied growth. So applied being that skill set that's used beyond the theatre. So you can see there drama education, for example, social and applied theatre is in there. Um, storytelling, poetry, they, they're applied skills that, that, you know, are specifically put into the program to make sure that you're really employable and that, you, you know, that you can work in the sector afterwards. Cultural policy and administration, they're all applied skills. Um, but we have, you know, everything else in there from contemporary Irish theatre, modern Irish theatre, performance and music, um, stagecraft production and technical theatre. And on the top um, right hand side of your screen, you'll see ensemble performance by three. So within our program, we have three full productions and they're double weighted modules. And that is where you get credit and you are assessed on the basis of taking part in a play. So this is where our, our single honours program differs quite substantially to the joint honours programs. Though those students don't get a chance to be in a play and to have that assessed as part of the coursework. On MI001, you get to be in a play, you work with professional directors and you get to perform, if that's what you wish to do, uh, on a professional stage three times as part of your program. So that's a that's a really important um, selling point, I think. But we have research skills, undergraduate research projects. So elements of a traditional university education are in there as well as those applied and artistic skills. There's another wonderful image of, of, of some students now graduated performing in another space here on campus. You know, the uniqueness of our program, I suppose, I've tried to distill it into, into, into a short list of 10, 10 reasons why, 10 things that are different about our program to maybe programs elsewhere in the university sector. We have small class sizes. You get a lot of intensive tuition from really expert tutors. I'll, I'll introduce my colleagues in a little while. You know, our programs are offered in conjunction with two professional theatres. So you, you get to work in these spaces. You get to see work in these spaces. You get to meet the staff, you know, so Jay, who's our technical director, comes in and teaches some of our stagecraft module. Louise, who's our artistic director, you know, our executive director comes in and talks about programming. You get to meet real life theatre makers. Um, we do master classes with people who come through and so on. I've already talked about this being an accessible program for anyone who has a passion, but doesn't maybe have a background or hasn't been in a position to, to uh, you know, to, to access drama and theatre. We have a 50-50 balance between studio and classroom time, and that's an important one for you because lots of people going to college want to know that they'll have time in the studio, want to know that they'll have time to make drama. We have that. We have specialist teaching spaces, expert teaching staff, cutting edge research. And that's important because you want your lecturers in, in college, you want them to be the best at what they do. And, and I think, you know, I'll show you some of our books and publications and while all of our staff here <clears throat> are internationally renowned researchers. And we bring that knowledge, that new knowledge into our studios and into our classrooms to train you and to teach you. Um, year three of the programme, as with all University of Limerick degrees, is off campus and you can study abroad or you can work with professional providers. We place our students ourselves, so they go and they work with Landmark or they go and work with, 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 with um, you know, Graffiti in Cork or, or Branner in Galway or wherever it might be, the Gate in Dublin. We've placed students all over the country. Three full productions. And a unique blend, not, not derived from an English department, but a unique blend not seen elsewhere. There's the team, that's the four of us, um, you know, um, looking resplendent as always. And as I said to you, you know, we publish a lot. So you see our books there, um, uh, you know, the, the book on the right hand side, The Golden Thread, was just launched last night, actually, believe it or not. And it's an incredible two volume um, book looking at Irish women playwrights across the last um, 300 years in Ireland. But you can see all the, the stuff that we teach about education, theatre, applied theatre, critical themes is up there and so on and so forth. This is a, a wonderful image of the Lime Tree Theatre, which is our home from home. Our first year students, our BA and our BA CAT students are in there a lot. I'll be taking my group in there next week, um, performing up on that stage and, and, and doing workshops up on that stage. Incredible space, 510 seat auditorium. Even if you don't come to do our programme, come and see some work there. It's um, limetreetheatre.ie, absolutely fantastic. And here's some more posters um, of, of kind of the work that we do. Um, some traditional work, you can see Brian Friel there and some Tom Murphy on the left hand side. Where does one go after a degree in drama theatre studies? Well, the world is your oyster as far as I'm concerned. But our graduates typically, we've only graduated three classes, so we're just beginning to get a sense of this. Lots of them go into theatre. Lots of them become theatre facilitators, stage managers. One of our graduating classes now working in the bell table as a deputy stage manager, working with, with a Fish Amble Theatre Company on their new production this very moment. 
Um, so directly into employment with excellent communication, teamwork and creative and entrepreneurial skills. Further academic study in the field of drama and theatre, you know, um, again, another girl from our graduating class is coming straight back to do a PhD with us. She got a first class honours degree. She's after getting a scholarship from the college and she's going to come back to, to, to do her doctorate with us to train to be a researcher and possibly a, a lecturer. Some people will go on to do further, you know, we've had people go on to do actor training in the UK and in Ireland. People go straight into employment with venues or with media and with marketing. And some people set up, two of our graduates from two years ago have set up a drama school out in, in Killaloo and in, and, and in Nina. And they're, they're, they're running workshops and teaching kids all over the North Tipperary area. And they, you know, those two fantastic women are, I suppose they're essentially, they're, they're dr dr dramatic entrepreneurs at this stage doing a really, really good job. And some people come back and do teacher education, maybe move into, into PME primary um, and so on and so forth. And drama isn't really a subject at second level yet. So it's a little bit more difficult for PME secondary, but hopefully in the years to come, that will change. I'm fairly convinced of that. And I'm going to leave you with some of these images. I know Rachel will be, will be eager to, to, to come back in here. But even in the midst of lockdown last year, these are the three plays we put up last year. So I suppose I'm, I'm sh finishing with these just to show you our versatility, but also our sheer passion for, for making theatre. You know, so Girls Like That was directed by Barbara McQueeve, who's an award-winning Irish playwright. We put that on in the lime tree. You know, you can see the guys there in, 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 in their masks. Um, Pot and Kettle and How the Boat Would Run, that was our first year play last year. And then Don't Hate the Player was our second year piece last year. No audiences, they were all streamed and recorded, but the students still got to come in and got to perform them three times. And we had no COVID cases, so I'm incredibly proud of what they did in all of that. Uh, here in Mary Eye as well, just to finish this, we have an incredible drama society. That's Midas. I've, I've worked with them for many years. You can see imagery there from Les Miserables. Uh, from Starlight Express and then from A Chorus Line, which was our last show before lockdown. So drama exists here. The place lives and breathes drama. So come here and take take MI001. You won't regret it. So that's me. I am going to stop sharing at that stage and hand back to you, Rachel. Um, Mike, that is great. Thank you so much for that presentation. And I think one thing is for certain is your passion absolutely comes off the screen as you're talking about it, which is really important for people who are interested in studying drama and theatre studies. Um, we're going to go now to some questions that have come in and just to remind people that if you have a question about this programme, about drama in general, even if it's on the BA, or about MIC, the college in general, or what life here is like as a student, then please do use the chat function. Uh, it's the speech bubble icon that you'll see on your screen of whatever device you're using. So type in your questions and we'll do our very best to answer them over the next 10 minutes or so. Um, we have a number of questions that have come in prior to the event or, you know, as, as, as open days um, start uh, coming around, uh, people start asking questions. So I'm going to start off with some of those, Mike, if you don't mind, sure while we're is. waiting. Um, I know you mentioned there about the uh, performances that are, are uh, produced and done by the students of the BA CATS programme. Um, and I can definitely personally vouch for the, uh, the venues. They're fantastic. I have attended many events there. Um, I just wanted to come back. A question that we're often asked is about whether somebody needs a background in acting. And I know you said that there were different roles mm -hmm. in those productions. So do the students get to choose which type of role they they could do? They do, Rachel. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we we chat to, it's a really good question. And thank you for asking that. And whoever put it to you in the first place, thank you to them as well. It, uh, you know, we, we, we're, we always differentiate between the fact that we're not an actor training program. So we don't force people into acting. And we recognize that lots of people. So, for example, you know, where I went to school, I, I'm, I'm from Roscommon originally. There was very little drama available in, in, in my secondary school. And it was only when I went to college, actually, that I became interested in drama. So if you'd said to me, God, you need to be in a play when you're 18 or 19, that would have petrified me, to be honest with you. And I'm still not a performer. Um, I, I, I direct and I design. So in, in answer to your question, in first year, we encourage everyone to perform in, in the piece that we perform in first year, but we we look at their ability and we look at their comfort level and we start to say, well, maybe you should have maybe more of a principal part or maybe you should be part of, of the ensemble, some, some of the company. And the only that's the only point at which we insist that people perform, because after that, then we begin to have a dialogue with our students about maybe whether they want to work in production or in technical theatre or in stage management. They'll all still be on the same show, but they might be a deputy stage manager or they might be a lighting operator, or they might be looking after props, or they might be working as an assistant to the director. So everyone performs once because you have to understand where you're at in terms of performance. You have to have at least one experience of that. But then after that, no, we have a conversation with people about whether performance is their thing, because it's not. And, and 
yes, loads and loads of people come to theatre because they're passionate about acting or they would love to be an actor on, 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 on film and screen. But what we find is that as soon as people discover all these other areas, they kind of go, oh, I'd love to be in doing that or I'd love to be interested in that. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it does actually. And actually on the flip of that, um, uh, it had just occurred to me, if performance was my thing, if acting mm-hmm. was really my thing, yeah. is that only, like, is it possible that somebody would come along and just do acting type roles? 100%. Or would they be exposed to? Yeah, they're exposed to all the other bits and pieces in the sense that they do mo- they do modules about the other bits and pieces, you know, so then, you know, they, they'll have to understand the basics of how a lighting desk will work or how QLab, which is our sound system, would work or what a props master does on a production. But yeah, but if, if acting is your thing, then absolutely we hone in on that. And you get to work with, with acting coaches, you get to work with our directors, all of whom, you know, and you know, all of whom help hone that because, you know, we obviously people are passionate about acting and that's a skill we want to really, really improve in them. Um, but also, you know, you know, we, we, we encourage people to, to branch out from that as well because the natural kind of sister disciplines, shall we say, of acting are writing and directing. So we have modules specifically in writing for theatre and in directing for theatre because if, you, if you're an actor, then maybe try your hand at writing a play which our students do in that module, or in directing a piece, which our students do in that module as well. So we we take that core interest and we try to try to extend and expand upon it. That's great. Thanks so much. I, I know you'd mentioned that there's no audition as mm. part of the um, entrance requirements. We, we're often asked if there's a requirement for a portfolio. Yeah, and, and, and no, that's a really good question, and it's one that's asked of me quite a bit as well. And the answer is no. We 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 don't. We we have no additional requirements other than so if you're. If you're kind of in the the, the, the the kind of situation that most of our entrance uh, candidates, most of our, our incoming students would be, which is you're just doing your leaving cert this year, you're probably 17, 18, 19, whatever it might be. All you need to do is list MI001 along with your other CEO preferences, preferably at the top. That would be where we'd love to see you go. And um, and you need to do nothing else. You don't want to have any further communication with us. And you rock up here in September 2022 and we meet you and we, we assume you know, we, we do a lot of backfilling in the first semester. So we, we have a module on movement in the first semester where people just become acquainted with, with moving in a studio. We have a, a, a big, long module on, on introduction. We backfill a lot of stuff that might be perhaps missing. We introduce people to the canon of Irish literature. So the program is specifically and deliberately set up to introduce people um, as if they have an understanding and a sense of what it is, but really never encountered it in any substantial way before. That's great. Thanks, Mike. Um, we have a question as well about the third year of the programme, the off-campus year. Sure. And uh, the question is about whether it's um, possible to go abroad and study abroad placements. Yeah, yeah, really good question again. And um, and, and as with, with all our programmes, is, yes is the answer straight away. Um, you know, we had a, we have a student, believe it or not, even in the middle of the pandemic, we've, we've one of our one of our third year students that's currently in in. Pennsylvania and Gannon University studying theatre over there. So we have a really vibrant network. Mary Macklin College has sister universities all over the world with whom we have linkage agreements. So we encourage our students to go abroad and to experience what it might be like to, to be a theatre student in the UK or in China or in Denmark or in or in the US, wherever it might be. And you can do that for the full year, Rachel. You can you can go for the full year in year three. Um, or you can or you can mix and match and you can do half and half. So you might go to you might go abroad for your autumn and then do professional work placement for the spring. So the, again, within our system in UL and in Mary I, we have two semesters, the autumn and the spring, and they're they're separate to each other, two terms. Um, so you can do one abroad and one professional placement or a full year of either. Um, and we have great flexibility. And one of my colleagues, um, David Clare, is um, David is uh, actually American. But uh, so I suppose particularly, you know, he, he looks after our international um, incoming and outgoing because we have a lot of international students come here to study. You know, in first year at the moment, we have a Romanian student, we have a South African student, you know, we, we have students from the US, from China. Um, so it's a real international flavor to our program, which is really exciting for us. But uh, yeah, David is, is really knowledgeable about where our students can go and study abroad. And as I say, we have some fantastic partnerships all over the world. That's great. Thanks, Mike. And yeah, as as with everything else in Mary I, there is loads of help and advice and guidance for students in all aspects of the programme, including the off-campus year. And what a brilliant way to combine your studies and your interests with seeing a bit of the world. I, I Listen, I'd love to be back in college again. And, and some of us actually found out what we were good at while we were doing our off-campus placements. So, yeah, no, it's, I, you know, funny, I have a sister in a di- different field completely. She's a lawyer and, um, you know, she, you know, and, and she, she, 
was in UCD, but went abroad to France for, for, for a semester. And, and in that time, found out what her discipline within law was going to be. And, and I think, so your experience and, and my sister's experience would be common to a lot of people. And I studied, I did my postgraduate work abroad in the UK as well. And I think that that experience of, of leaving this little island of ours for a little while, even if it's only for, for, for three or four months, is a really, really rich and rewarding one, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. And it absolutely gives people an advantage going into that first postgraduate interview, whether it's for an employer or a postgraduate programme, because you've actually got something to talk about and talk about what you've gained while you've been doing these wonderful things. Um, thanks for that. The other thing that we are often asked is, what kind of balance, what kind of mix is there between theory and the more practical side of the program? Is it kind of 50 50? Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of 50 50 and then 33 33 33. I'm, I'm using two two sets of ratios there. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So the, the, the balance we try to strive always in every semester is that 50% of your time would be in the studio, 50% of your time would be in a traditional kind of classroom setting. So, um, you know, the very first semester, first year, which our, our incoming first years are doing at the moment, is, is a classic example of that. You know, kind of two and a half modules are quite classroom based, lots of readings, tutorials, seminar groups, and 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 same uh, as the study of drama. Let's say if you were doing it within an English or, or a, sorry, a BA framework, you know, kind of classroom. And then the other 50 percent of their time is in a movement studio or in a drama studio or on the theatre, you know, working, hanging lights and doing things like that. So 50-50 typically through all the semesters is the balance we strive for between classroom and studio. And then the other balance is kind of 33, 33, 33. And what I mean by that is that always we, we, we in a year, we try to have one third of the studies kind of being that traditional academic work in terms of intellectual development, development of the self, development of, of one's own intellect and knowledge of the world. One third, which are very oriented towards applied and transferable skills. So things like cultural policy and management, drama education, a real practical toolkit that makes sure our graduates are, are employable in the world. And then the final third is that development of the, the kind of artistic, you know, kind of what does it mean to be a better actor? What does it mean to be a better director? What does it mean to be a better stage manager? So those, you know, we, we think really hard about maintaining all those balances. And as a result, Rachel, I have to say, and you know this from, from knowing our students, they, they tend to be a very happy bunch because I think they find that they're being prodded and poked in a, in a whole pile of of different but complementary fashions. It's 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 a program you have to be good at lots and lots and lots of different things. I think to excel at it really in some respects. But that's sorry that makes it sound really hard. I don't mean it that way. I mean I think what I mean is that it catches everyone in a sweet spot somewhere. Do you know you know that we 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 generally whether you're more kind of studious in terms of that academic mode or whether you're more expressive in terms of the artistic mode. Um, it, it it gets the benefit of, of of you somewhere along the line. I haven't put that particularly well, but yeah, I, I hope no, people. Yeah, I get what you mean. There's something yeah. for everyone on the program. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. That 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 does answer the question. I have one final question, unless another question comes in on, on the chat function in the next few minutes. Uh, we're nearly coming to the end of our time anyway. Sure. So the final question I had was: Do students on the BA Cats program have an opportunity? while they're in on the program to write and produce and put on their own work. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, a couple of different places for that. Yes, is the, is the unequivocal answer to that. Um, sometimes within the program itself, and, and obviously this depends on the module structure. So some of the things I, I, can, I mentioned earlier, like the writing and directing for theatre, you, you get a chance to write your play and to direct your play and to maybe perform in a play there. Um, but also, you know, Midas, who I mentioned, I showed some of those images at the end. Of, Midas uh, runs all the way through the year. And now that's not, uh, you know, that, that's not work that's assessed or part of your coursework. But that's where students come together with a little bit of staff guidance and put on performances uh, for the public. And uh, it's a really fantastic place, you know, our, our BA Cats and our BA and our all the other programs here at MIC. You have students, you meet students from other disciplines. You get to be in a musical, you get to be in a dance performance, you get to be in a play, and you maybe get to scratch an itch that you haven't had a chance to do on the programme. So loads of opportunities within the BA Cats for, for drama students, but also loads of opportunities. I'll give you a small example. You know, we we, we don't do, a, we do some dance work on the BA Cats programme, but one of our students graduated last year was an amazing contemporary dancer, and she you know, got together with a bunch of other students and put together kind of a dance performance, dance cabaret with Midas, which wasn't assessed for her coursework, but still represented a really important personal moment for her. So, yeah, we try to accommodate all of, all of those things where we can. 